नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुदस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुदस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुदस् होम एस् टू द fully enlightened buddha the worthy one the blessed one dear friends in dhamma buddha once one, uh, one person asked from the buddha anto jata bahi jata jataya jhatita paja all beings are tangled within tangles all beings are tangled outside people are entangled into a tangle or net who can entangle these tangles it's a it's like a puzzle uh, it shows that if you look at the whole world the human society we are always having some sort of troubles some sort of conflicts some sort of uh, difficult periods in our lives so we where does these conflicts troubles or problems arise normally we might say there is a war in syria war in afghanistan there is a conflict in myanmar or etc etc but actually the reason or the cause of conflict arises within our mind it is sprung it is originate within our minds no way else so if people are having wrong views uh, bad views or misunderstanding misconception or they are uh, full of hatred greed delusion then it is natural for us to have conflicts and struggles and troubles and problems so how are we going to solve these problems and face these problems i can remember very nice story uh, how buddha faced problems in their lives buddha one time visited to a brahmin's home this brahmin doesn't like buddha he is hate in the buddha so buddha when he went to his home he began to is called the buddha blame the buddha uh, despise the buddha criticize the buddha and he said so many harsh words to this brahmin a brahmin said buddha to the, those harming very insulting very blaming defaming words to the buddha buddha never utter a word he keep quiet he doesn't respond he didn't reply so when he uh, said and reply finish the story of the brahmin the buddha asked a question do you have any relatives any friends come into your home yes when the bus i have some relatives in such and such a city they will come to my home so what will you do when these relatives or friends are coming oh venerable sir i will make very nice food very delicious food and uh, i will welcome them very warmly and i will treat them very nicely then buddha suppose these relatives come to your home but on the way they have eaten their lunch and they are not hungry they will say okay we are not hungry 
I am afraid we cannot eat your food. And what will happen to the food? Venerable sir, when they go back, I, myself and my wife and my family, my children, all will eat the food. Then Buddha said, similarly, now you give me a piece, you, me, you give me a lunch with harsh words, bad words. I am not going to eat them. I am not take them personally. I will uh, not eat them. So, you have to eat them. The Brahmin understand the, all the negative words, all the bad words he said is uh, nothing. It will come back to us. So, this is a good lesson where we can learn from the Buddha. If you respond only, if you are going to uh, retaliate, if you are going to uh, say something in, in return, then the conflict will arise. Buddha said, Ariyo va tunni bhav, dhammiya va kata, ariyo va tunni bhav. If you want to talk, you talk righteous, correct, good, kind words. But if you don't have such things to talk, don't talk useless, uh, like provoking, creating anger, any harsh words, don't talk them. So, we must break, uh, we, we must not re uh, break the heart of others, or we must uh, respect the elders and disturb, we should not disturb the other people's mind. In that way, you can uh, retali uh, you can retaliate in nice way without harming, in a friendly way, without creating any conflicts. So what leads the conflicts? The Buddhas, uh, the, there are many reasons for conflicts. One is grudge. You hold something the people or that group of people has done to you. And because they have done to you, you have a kind of grudge. And when you start a conflict, there's a foreplay, four you know. You will say something and he will say something in return. Then the argument will go and argument will increase. The sound will increase. The tone will increase. Then the first thing we can do is to avoid the conflict by withdrawing that place. Instead of facing, you can say, I have something to do urgent. I will come tomorrow. We will discuss it tomorrow or something like that. That way, you can uh, diffuse, you can reduce the chances of getting, uh, getting this conflict bigger and bigger. And also, you can slower and reduce the volume of your uh, answering. That way, the more you increase your volume, more conflict can arise, more trouble can arise, more problem can arise. So, avoid. And also, another tactics we can use is say yes to his ideas and agree to his ideas, his arguments, and taking his side. That way you can pacify him, you can calm down him, you can uh, reduce his level of anger and level of conflict. There's a very nice story. Uh, there was a one uh, Chia woman in a company, and she traveled all the way to England to do a very big business with an English company. The day she flew back from Sydney to London, and she was going to meet the director of this company. So when she went to the reception desk, the reception is told, today my boss is in not good mood. So I, uh, I recommend you go back to your country again and come back again and discuss maybe when he's in a good mood. But lady was a good Buddhist. She was practicing loving kindness meditation. Never mind. 
I came all the way from Sydney to London to meet him. Whether it is successful or not, I don't mind. But I will meet your boss and I will talk if he's uh, ready and he's, uh, his mood is good, I will discuss. Otherwise, I will say hello and go back. And she went to the boardroom and she was sitting uh, one corner of the boardroom and she was practicing silently the loving kindness meditation. She sent the loving thoughts to the staff, to the director, to the, all the people in the company and all living beings. She was waiting there maybe 10 or 15 minutes and the owner of the director, managing director of this company came to the boardroom. And he straight away asked, who is this lady? What is she doing in this company? Who allowed her to come and all that? In a very angry tone. Then that uh, lady came towards him silently with a smiling face and told him, <coughs> Look, your eyes are, your eyes are very blue and they are very beautiful. They look like my kids' eyes. When uh, that lady said this to the man, he was very happy. He was in an angry mood, but he changed his mind and talk and uh, talk a little bit. Then they agreed for the terms and conditions of the contract, and she got the contract. So if you want to have a successful life, you have to react. You have to respond in a different way. In a place where there is an argument, where there is a heating debate, you must listen calmly and let the, the flow of uh, angry energy flow out from that person. Allow that person to uh, dilute, diffuse this uh, anger. And also the conflicts are arising in the society due to many prejudices, many discriminations. People think this class of people are not good, this class of people are not bad, these people are very uh, thuggery, these people are uh, doing a lot of stealing, and all that. I remember a nice story in America. There was a very rich man, and he used to uh, go to uh, some business in a very poor area in America. And unfortunately, he lost his uh, uh, purse in this slum, slum area. Uneducated drug addicts were there. And when he came to the office, he realized his uh, credit cards and all the valuable ID cards, bank cards, all of them were in the purse in his wallet. But unfortunately, he lost it. He lost the hope of receiving them. But he waited, waited, maybe somebody will find his uh, wallet and talk. And uh, there was his name card inside pocket. Young boy called him. And he told, sir, your purse is there. You come to such and such street, you can collect it. And he uh, went, to the, went to see the, this young boy and he gave the purse. And he asked one dollar uh, from this uh, person. Then the assistant of this big, big, big businessman told, see, he is asking money from you. He, he, he is like uh, taking ransom or like uh, money for his service. Then the boy said, no sir, I didn't have a telephone. I have to use a public telephone, uh, but I didn't have a coins to use the public telephone, I borrowed a one dollar from the shopkeeper nearby. So I used that dollar to call you. I need to repay that dollar, that's why I'm asking. So we have so many prejudices. So this person, this young boy, is living in a slum area, don't have a proper education, he hasn't been to school, but he had a very pure, very honest heart. heart. That is why he returned the purse, he didn't ask any money, he didn't take any money inside the purse. So this gentleman, 
was so impressed due to this uh, reason and uh, he uh, said uh, I will build a school in this area and I will support these kids to have a better education and some uh, uh, like training vocational training school so that these is, uh, people can uh, understand and learn and they can empower themselves to make the society a better place. So you, you see that we have these kind of prejudices so we have to disregard all these social discriminations, social stigma, social labeling. So it is very important for us to have uh, this kind of uh, understanding in order to avoid the conflict. Buddha himself was a kind teacher and also he resolved so many conflicts in the society. One time his own relatives, the Sakyans and Kolians, his uh, wife's side is Kolian. So both of them were gathered beside the Rohini River in India in order to make a fight. Why they are fighting? They are fighting for the water. Because that time there was a drought, the little water came in this Rohini River and the crops were drying. They want to have some water. But both sides is trying to carry the water to that side. So they were trying to kill. Then Buddha asked, why are you gathered here? They told them, Venerable Sir, we are gathered here to make a war. Why you are making a war? Then they said, Venerable Sir, we want water. The other side also want water. They break the well and uh, they bre break the dam and take the water to their side. We break the dam, take the water to our side. So th this is the conflict of the... Uh, this is the reason for the conflict or the war. war. Then the Buddha asked, what is the value of the water? They said water is, has a very less value, not much that valuable. Then he asked, the, what is the value of the human life? What is the value of the earth? Buddha said, they said to the Buddha, the value of the earth and the value of the human life is more worth than the water. Why are you trying to shed the blood on this earth? for the valueless water. Life is more valuable. The blood is thicker than water. Don't shed the blood in order to gain some water. So they listened to the Buddha and they agreed and they uh, withdraw from the fighting. And so the seed of war arise in our mind. If our mind can be made peaceful, must be uh, built a peaceful mind. In Buddhism, uh, we have the meditation. So peace within can be achieved. Uh, if you are trying to, the more people talk about peace, they're peace-loving people, they talk about peace, uh, they, they, but inside, but they are in reality, they are not ready to achieve peace because they are very limited in their thinking. So Buddha explained how can we resolve this conflict. There are three principles we need to apply in order to receive a peaceful environment, peaceful uh, situation in our life. How? Intelligent person, a wise person, a good person, reasonable person will establish in morality. You see, the morality include not killing, not stealing, not harming, and not uh, sexual misconduct, and not lying. These things will lead to uh, conflicts, especially killings. And so if you, are, if you can base your life on uh, uh, virtue, we call sila, and then if you base your life on virtue, secondly, if you can develop 
the uh, mindfulness then if you develop the mindfulness you can develop the wisdom so such person only can resolve the conflict the three principles virtue the cultivation of mind development of the mind thirdly that development mind will lead to development of the wisdom we need to understand everybody in this world have basic need they need food they need water they need uh, houses they need medicine so we must help each other to gain those things if you are very rich if you have too many resources it is you have a duty to share these things to those who don't have these resources because people take weapons people take uh, other kind of uh, activities other kind of strategies to gain these things they steal why they steal because they don't have things to eat so we need to open our mind understand everyone needs and share what we have that way we can avoid conflicts so value of the non conflict is very import important but there are many ways we can solve conflicts by interfering others activities we can help them to resolve the conflict secondly mediation if there's conflicts going to be happen we need to mediate these people and help and facilitate to discuss the problem and find a solution which is uh, agreeable reasonable ju uh, justice and fair fair that people can agree and no need to have a struggle or conflict and also we can have a informal mediation so these methods can uh, take to resolve the conflicts buddhism always teaches us to take one self yourself and myself as example if you don't like somebody come and hurt you if you don't like somebody come and cheat you if you don't like somebody comes and take your things similarly others also don't like so buddha always encourage for us to take one self as example so buddha said while protecting one self can protect others if you here first person while protecting he means he protect five precepts and follow good principles good qualities and also encourage others to develop such spiritual and moral qualities and principles that way he can uh, develop uh, good qualities in others the second person also practice uh, avoid conflicts by practicing non violence loving kindness and they don't try to uh, gain or achieve anything at the detriment of others doing any harm to others so their life is so balanced their active activities and attitudes are balanced if you want to achieve things at the expense of others at the expense of others happiness that is wrong so the conflict can arise buddha wa said once no one can become a great person by birth if you are born to a higher caste higher family rich family merely because you are born to a higher class or rich family you don't become a great person how you become a great person by practicing by following good and nice principles uh, that is helpful to protect humanity that is encouraging human kindness sharing buddha always encourage to 
do meritorious deeds. These are called eternal meritorious deeds. What are they? The growing trees, growing forest, uh, growing, uh, building bridges, building houses, building toilets and other amenities for the people to use. These things can create eternal happiness. Why? Each moment, it, 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 these things create eternal merits because these things will help other people. If you are crossing a road or a small waterway, if there is a bridge or we call uh, a danda, a uh, stick between the two banks, then people can cross the small stream or the bridge. So each time they are using, they are creating good positive merits for the person who make. So Buddha explain, explain uh, to the uh, uh, people that we must make these good meritorious deeds. And if we use and misappropriate common properties and the take others' properties for your own benefit. These things can make conflicts. So in order to avoid these conflicts, you can uh, avoid these actions. If you avoid, if you try to exploit the weak and tramp down the weak, invalid persons, and you are strong and you defeat them, these kind of things will always create problems. So we need in the society fair share of these resources. So to reduce conflicts, one should uh, accept righteous behavior. According to the Chakravati Sihanada Sutta, the social conflicts can grow worse and worse because when poors are denied the resources and they used to take things and steal things, then that will increase using weapons. When you using weapons, uh, they, they will increase the killing and lying and all the morals will depreciate society. So dear friends in Dhamma, in order to uh, uh, have a peaceful life, Buddha said, you must have a verbal communication motivated by kind words and mental thoughts motivated by loving kindness and sharing resources equally with others and increasing moral life and right views about the world. Buddha said, Samagga Ram, Samagga Rata, you, unity is love. Living in unity is the happiness. Living in unity is the peace and happiness. So dear friends, let us try to heal this world. Let us try to uh, help this world and have a good life. So may the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha guide you and protect you and bless you. May the Triple Gem bless you.